Radio YouTube, so I've got this sub 93. Yes, you heard that correctly. There are still subs getting around, believe it or not. <laughs> nah, they actually, um, yeah, they, they went out of business uh, probably 10 years ago now. Uh, but yep, there's still a few kicking around. And we've got to do a front tender on this one here. So as you can see there, there's a, a bumper and a bonnet. I've got some, literally just put some wet on wet down on them put on wet primer and obviously I kept the, the fenders covered up with plastic, two reasons, keeps the overspray off the blend areas and gives me something to do while the wet on wet's drying. So what's that orange tape you're using there Gunny? Well I'm glad you asked. It's the new uh, Colad tape and I'm liking it so far. Uh, Spray Guns Direct just sent a couple of boxes out I said, hey, do you want to try it out? I'm like, yeah, why not? I'll give it a shot. I'll let you know what I think. And honestly, it's just as good as the 3M. I've only used it for probably three days now, but, you know, it, it bakes well. It doesn't uh, leave any residue as advertised and sticks well. What else can you ask for out of the tape, really? I like the color too, just something different. The purple is pretty cool, but... Yeah, you gotta change it up every now and then, I guess. So yeah, Thursday morning, busy this week. Adeline's away at trade school, so just the three of us. Trady's here in the paint shop. And our detailing guy has been busy doing, I think he's had like four or five full buff all overs, so paint paint rejuvenation type full cut and polishes like cars that we haven't actually painted anything on but just in for a cut polish detail and touch up so we've had to do all our own polishing all our own prime ups all of that stuff so yeah it's been pretty busy this week um i've been coming in early i've just got the key off the boss and said hey i'll come in early been staying back a little bit like i don't, know, I, I don't like working past 4 30 telling us you know I mean if absolutely needed so I would but you know, I'd rather go home and have the evenings or the afternoon evenings to myself and come in early you know so this job was all prepped color matched and ready to go last night but I didn't have a boot so yeah first thing in the morning get these things squirted and yeah, I got heaps more, heaps more jobs out there. Yeah, I got a little bit of polishing on this uh, Suzuki Alto I painted. Probably a couple of other jobs too I've forgotten about. Yeah, I had someone in, like in one of my raw videos. I think it was yesterday morning. Yeah, and he's like, "Do you ever shut up?" <coughs> I'm like, "Well, maybe not, but you do because you just got blocked." I mean. As I said in the past, I don't have time for that kind of negativity anymore. I'm like, I'm, I keep try to keep my videos pretty positive. I'm not going out there to hate on you or anything, so I expect a bit of uh, respect back, you know. You know, you're welcome to criticize, but just be civil about it. It's, it's, it's one of those, it's not what you say, it's how you say it type scenarios, I guess. You don't have to watch, and that's what I, you know, that's why reply to you, which I didn't reply to him, it's not worth getting in an argument, no one's ever going to win, but yeah, I mean, I never told you you had to watch, it's, I think it's part of this like entitlement generation, um, you know, I clicked on your video, therefore I deserve everything I wanted out of it, you know. Yeah, that's last up. So the inside of this bonnet, or hood, as you say in America, that one over there, it's um, sort of like a semi-gloss finish. So what I've been doing lately, and it's been working really well, is just put a little bit of hardener, like say no more than 5% hardener, hardener, sorry, just stick up here, hardener um, in the base coat, and it gives it like a little bit, of, bit more gloss than your straight up base coat, and durability as well, which is another important part of it.
that nice time of year here in Perth. It's our spring at the moment. Well, not for long. Summer starts in December. Yeah, what is it today? As of recording this video, it's like, I think it's the 21st or something like that of November. So, you know, you guys do get the videos a little bit delayed. That's all good. I just take the cam home once a week on Friday these days, upload footage onto my computer, and then, yeah, it either makes it to YouTube or it doesn't. I don't, I don't upload all the videos I record. two guns. Uh, I'm gonna, first I'll go out, clean out that wet on wet gun and then I'll get one gun with the hardened base coat for the inside of the bonnet and I'm just gonna put one nice wet coat over that dark colored wet on wet. So that's all that's gonna need and then yeah, just uh, I'm still using the DV1 HVLP 1.3 at the moment, and I've been enjoying it. So yeah, not usually the biggest fan of HVLP, but coming into the warmer months, it's actually it's been working quite well for me. Like when I say I don't prefer HVLP and I don't recommend them, it's not that I don't know how to use them because I do. Like I worked in a shop where the boss made me use HVLP, and that was for well over a year because the paint company had them convinced that it saved all this paint. I'm not really convinced it does. And this is coming from someone who's extensively used HVLP guns. You know, as I said, it was like probably a year and a half I worked at this shop, BMW shop, and I had to use them. Um, so yeah, so I definitely know how to use them. It's just that, I don't know, most people probably wouldn't like the way they spray. They consume more air. I've talked about this topic quite a few times, but even one of my fellow workmates, I, I just had the base coat for a certain job in a gun and I'm like, hey, well, it's in the gun, you want to use it? And he's like, yeah, why not try out the new device? And he hated it. You know, he's like, man, it just sprays really weird. It sounds way too loud and yeah, he didn't like it. So, you know, unless you're experienced with them and or you've got a real reason to try and use HVLP, probably steer away from it, you know? Like, yeah, if you're in a highly humid environment or something like that, if you've got a reason to, sure, go, go for it. Give it a shot, but... Anyway, I'll be back in five minutes there, Gunner. Let's go clean this out, get the face coat ready, and I'll see you soon. Ready on YouTube, yeah, so back to it. CV1 HVLP 1.3 for the face coat here. Spray it straight up onto the any lip, and it just it goes on way too chunky. The funny thing about it, and the really confusing thing about it is that with your HVLP Plus or even take your trans check, say key in 20 um, and most non-HVLP guns, you can spray with lower pressure than your HVLP. So they call it HVLP, that's what's confusing about it. But well, how come I can spray with a lower pressure with non-HVLP? I think that's what I've been told is that HDLP compared to like the really old school guns, you know? But yeah, anyway. Like, I'm talking HDLP compared to, you know, your old conventional suction set guns that want, you know, 60 PSI or something crazy like that. Here, mix up 750 mils of base coat. 
I wouldn't have mixed up any more if I wasn't spraying with the HDLT. You know, I, I find the paint savings are laughable, really. Like if they're so tiny compared to say your brand check or even my HLT class, which may but I don't know, it just seems to be a bit nicer to lay it down and that's chunky I guess. That's where I can put it. Yeah, that's chunky. Yeah, they say that, Jenny. Alright, I'm on the 
Gunny is using it just to prove a point. So, how much did I mix up? 900 mil. Or 950 actually. So, that would have been probably just enough, I reckon, if I was using the Supernova Lotus Edition, which I love. I love that gun and I do crank it out. I used it yesterday on this, uh, what was it? Alpha, yeah, a black Alpha Julietta or something like that. I love clearing with that Lotus, but it's a bit hungry. I mean, it's not going to stop me from using it because it uses a bit more clear, but yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably stop using it on the larger jobs, you know, like this. Just the extra clear that you do, so this, we're proving a point in this video to prove that you don't need a big dollar gun to get a big dollar finish and sometimes these super guns can actually be able to be more efficient. I know some people like they snub their super guns or stop, snub them, whatever you want to say. Um, you know, that uh, I'm better than that type of thing, but man, if it sprays well, I don't care. I mean, I copped a bit of black actually for um, not really giving me $10 piece of crap gun <laughs> a good chance. But it is, it's, it's crap, that thing, right? You're not going to good shake up my... Yeah, I, I've been taking not wearing my, my clear these days and... Oh man, that's not even framed properly. There's a bit of gun cord up in there. That's all it was, just that. I reckon that's all it was, just that little bit there. Sometimes you can just do that. On the old Phillies you can just flick the cap around and I think this will get us going again. Revisit the bonnet last. 
a couple of things. It gives the bonnet a bit more flex on because I'm sweating a bit heavier on the bonnet. And it also means that the bonnet's the last thing that I, I spray. Best 
value for money. Really, this is why I recommend this gun to so many people. Because when I recommend things to people, I put you in, I put myself in your situation. Like, you know, if I was a budget, like trying to do things on a budget, but I still wanted a good party gun, this is probably the one I would get. Great base coat, VOC, top coat, clear coat, everything. It's great for primer if you get it in a 1.8. It's obviously great for clear coat in a 1.4. I do think that air cap needs a bit of a soak. It's actually not even framed properly. <laughs> but you can still get a good finish out of it, you know? It's, it's spraying a little bottom or top heavy, but I was obviously able to even that up. Hey, there's a few chunks of, a few genibs in there, but nothing major, you know? Like, nothing that I'm too worried about. Nothing wrong with that, mate. $200 gun. I've seen worse than $1,000 gun. Alright, so that's it not that I'm looking to start shit but I've seen people spray with starters that get that big thick orange feel it's more the guys that aren't experienced with starters like new people to a starter will get um, yeah real thick orange peel and runs and stuff like that but there you go FLG5 as I said I think that air cap actually needs a bit of a soak I reckon there's a little bit of clear caught up in it or something like that but I was still able to make it work and I'm going to start using this a little bit more just to prove what it can do, you know? Well, but I think we've, we've done enough. You've got enough proof right there, haven't you? Nothing wrong with that at all. I'm quite happy with that. If I got that out of my Pro Light or my Zada Jet or my Iwata, you know, that's a passable job. Absolutely. It didn't use excessive paint. We came in under our 950, I reckon we probably use closer to 850 over a full front end, that's not bad at all. Anyway, gunners, I'll see you in the next one. Get out there and post some shit.